God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. We are Abundant Grace Church. I'm the pastor, Bishop Ramon de Maria. And this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Amen. God bless you today. The title of the message today is Obedience to the Will of God. I'll be coming from Romans chapter 12, and verse 1, which reads as follows from the King James Version. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Again, Good News Bible renders it. So then, my friends, because of God's great mercy to us, I appeal to you. Offer yourselves as a living sacrifice to God, dedicated to his service and pleasing to him. This is the true worship that you should offer. Now, the writer of this letter was Paul the Apostle. He wrote about A.D. 56 from the city of Corinth. And the theme is, righteousness is from God. And justification is by faith through Jesus Christ only. So we have to understand the background of this letter. Paul wrote this letter to prepare the way for his voyage to uh, visit the church in Rome on his way to Spain. Paul had a desire to not only see the church in Rome, but also to visit Spain to spread the gospel. Now understand that Paul was writing to a church that didn't know him, had never received any communication from him or any teaching from him. So he is presenting himself to a, an audience that did not know him. And that's ironic because a lot of times we go to different places and the people don't know who we are. And when they don't know who you are, they're leery about receiving you, correct? So Paul wrote this letter, and look at the magnificent letter that he wrote to them. And how he explained the doctrine of justification. How he explained the gifts and workings of God through the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. So you can see that this was a letter not only of introducing himself, but of instruction and in doctrine and Christian ethics at the same time. So, today I will open with Romans chapter 11 and verse 36, which incidentally is the verse before. And we should always read the verse before and the verse after our main text, okay? So Romans chapter 11 and verse 36 says, for of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. Amen. That's from the King James Version. Now from the Good News Bible it reads, For all things were created by him, and all things exist through him and for him. To God be glory forever. Amen. So here we see an important part. We see that it says, For of him and through him. And to him are all things. Everything was created for God. Not only in nature, but in providence, in divine majesty. Everything was created for his praise and glory. The Father is to get all the praise and glory for everything. Jesus consistently gave praise and glory to the Father. Jesus was consistently faithful to the will of the Father. So here we see that the Father is the creator of all things. The Fa now understand, the Father, the Word, and the Spirit are all one. And we call this unity, or this trinity, 
the Godhead. So God is Father, the Word, and the Spirit. And John, Apostle John, says in 1 John that we have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And, and what's it say? All three agree. You cannot separate, you cannot say the Spirit said this. Say the Spirit told me this when the Word of God says one thing. You catch my point? You cannot separate the words of Christ from the Holy Spirit, from the Father. You cannot separate. They are in unity and they all agree. So we have to understand that you cannot separate and say, oh, God told me this, or this is that, or the Spirit said this, and it does not agree with the written Word of God. Okay? That doesn't happen. So everything was produced by Him. The councils were produced by him. Let me also add this, that governments are set in place by him. Everything is set up by him and for him, for his praise and glory. Okay? So we have to understand that everything that happens is under God's control. Okay? And it says... To whom be glory forever. Which means that be glory. Now the only thing that is to be glorified, understand, and I want to stress this. The only thing that is to be glorified is God. Not angels, not saints, not people, nothing. Not creation. You don't glorify anything. You don't glorify people. God is the only one. That is to be glorified, and God is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Or Holy Spirit, if you want to say Holy Spirit. No man is to be glorified. No human. No one is to be exalted above God. Bowed down to. Worshipped. Only one is God. So we have to understand that we have to get our priorities right. We have to live our life according to the Word of God, not according to man, but according to the Word of God. God says, Amen. That means, so be it, it is written, that's it, there's no more. <laughs> okay? Amen. When we say Amen, we need to think about what we are agreeing to. How many times you hear people say, Amen, Amen, Amen. You have to look at what you're saying Amen to. You can't Amen anything that comes from any pulpit, comes from any teacher, or any human being. If it doesn't line up with the Word of God, you don't agree with it, okay? So, let's continue on with our main verse, Romans 12 and verse 1. Let me read it again for you, just so you have it fresh in your mind. For the King James Version. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And the Good News Bible renders it. So then, my friends, because of God's great mercy to us, I appeal to you, Offer yourselves as a living sacrifice to God, dedicated to His service and pleasing to Him. This is the true worship that you should offer. Remember, we are made or created to praise God, right? To worship God. Your mannerism is very important in how you praise God. So where it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, which means by the depths of the riches of his divine mercy. When you ponder, my beloved, what God has done for you, the mercy that he has showed you, there was no reason that you shouldn't have a great desire 
that you shouldn't have a hunger and a thirst to praise God. Just knowing that you don't have to go into torment for eternity should be enough. But more so, knowing that God's mercy, by His mercy, He called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. As we sang this morning, is amazing grace. Once I was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. See what? See the truth. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free, or make you free. When you know the truth. Isn't it nice to wake up knowing that you're going to heaven? Should you die? Well, when you go to bed, that if you don't wake up, if God chooses to take you to heaven, that you're going to be with him for eternity? Isn't that comforting to know that? I can't see how the, an atheist can exist every day. Believe that if he dies, poof, he's done. <laughs> That's the end of everything. There's no hope. There's no hope for anyone that doesn't believe in God. And, uh, let me say this, that anybody that confesses to be a Christian and comes against other Christians needs to examine themselves to see if they are truly saved. And they need to repent of their sins. It says that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. We when we say a living sacrifice, we don't mean just go out and give your life. We mean that we deny the privileges of this life to follow Christ. We put Christ first before our own need. We put others first. But what I mean is that we deny ourselves in certain cases to make sure that others have something. <clears throat> like we could donate our time, donate finances. We can give to others, give to the widows, give to the orphans, <clears throat> those in distress, those that are hurting. You know, this time of the year we have a lot of Christmas movies on. And that they all talk about giving and giving and sacrificing. And miracles happening in the midst of that giving and that and them, and them sacrifices that others may have. That means that you are offering yourself your de and denying yourself that you that you may fulfill the, the will of God in your life. That's what the message obedience to the will of God. But how do you know the will of God? You must read the word of God. You must pray. You must spend time with God to know his will in your life. So you offer your body as a living sacrifice to him. It means you give up things. That he may be glorified in you and through you. That's what's all behind it. That he would be exalted above all things, and not you. So, so how else do you do it? By killing the flesh, which is hard. If you want to kill something, kill the flesh. Kill the members of your flesh that it won't sin against God. Is it easy to do? No. It's hard to kill the flesh, isn't it? Your flesh loves this life. Your flesh <coughs> is from the ground. Is it not? Made from the clay of the earth. You're human. You're made from the earth, and to the earth you shall return. Yeah, if the rapture takes place, well, you're changed if you're still living when Christ comes back, right? When the rapture happens. But if not, 
You go by way to grave, but you will be resurrected and changed. How quick? In an optimals. In an instant. In the twinkling of an eye. You can't really measure it. It's going to happen so quick. So if you're not ready, guess what? Bye-bye, you're behind. Meditate on that for a moment. So I said, which is your reasonable service? Which is your reasonable service? It's not just only consecrating yourself on the outside, but also on the inside. It's like the sacrifice on the altar. It's an act of the mind. It's, it's the, how could I put it? It's an act of wisdom. It's an act of reason. Like deciding, you look by reason. You look at when you when it's when you do something, when you're trying to figure something out by reasoning, how you are reasoning about it. What well, if I do this, this happens. If I do this, this happens. If I don't do this, this doesn't happen. If I don't do this, this doesn't happen. How do I do what is right? What is the right way to go? Well, you're going to find that out by what the Word of God says. What the Word of God says. You can read the Word of God and reason through the Word of God. You can look at it and say, the Word of God says this, the world says this. If I do this, I have eternal life. If I do this, I have temporary gratification. Which one do you want? You want to live in a blessed hope of eternal life or get all your rewards here and now and perish? What do you want to do? See? That's what reasoning does to you. Let's move right along to Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 where it says, <clears throat> very important, I hope everybody's listening to this one, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That's from the King James Version. Now from the Good News Bible it reads, Do not conform yourself to the standards of this world, but let God transform you inwardly by complete change of your mind. Then you will be able to know the will of God, what is good and is pleasing to Him and is perfect. So, how do you know what is pleasing to God? How do you know what God desires of you? How do you know what the will of God is for you in your life? What must you do? Meditate on the Word of God. You've got to read the Word of God. Meditate on the Word of God. You must pray. You must seek God for advice. Seek God for wisdom. According, listen, according to the steps outlined in the Word of God. You want to know what God has for you? Read His Word. Read Psalms. Read Proverbs. Read the New Testament, which includes the Gospels, the Book of Acts, and the Epistles. And seek God through prayer. Meditate on the Word of God. There's a procedure for growth in the Word of God. How do you know what not to conform yourself to? Read the Word of God. It will tell you what to conform yourself to. And it's not the world. Because the world is passing by. The world, this world is temporary. It's going to be destroyed. It's going to be purged. The only thing that will last is your salvation in Jesus Christ. By reading God's Word and spending time with Him, you can renew your mind. You can renew your thought process. And when you do that, you will do the things that are good and acceptable and perfect in God's will. That's not so hard, is it? Why do people make it so hard? That's not so hard. It's easy. See? Not to be conformed to this world means following the Holy Spirit. The meeting of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit prompts you. The Spirit is in conflict with the flesh, is it not? 
Flesh says, oh, this is good. It feels good. Spirit says, don't do it. Put your faith and trust in God. Listen to my voice, not the world's voice. The world's saying, I don't believe the Spirit. Spirit say, don't believe the world. It's a constant conflict. And what you, what you have to do is meditate on the things that are good, precious, things that are proven, the things that have power. That is through the Word of God. The words of the world change every minute. Procedures change every minute. But the Word of God is true. The Word of God does not change. It never changes. It will never change. No matter what man tries to say, it will never change. The Word of God is true. The Word of God is faithful. And Jesus is the Word of God. So, and be ye transformed, which means changed. See, instead of following the ways of the world, a Christian must be transformed. Now, when I look at this, being that having an engineering background, electrical, electronic, I see transform. I think of a transformer that you hook voltage to. And through the coils, through this process, through a core, and we know our core is the Holy Spirit within us. Through this, this core, it's transformed to another voltage rating. So you might put 480 volts in, but you can turn it, transform it to where it'll be 220 volts, 110 volts, 60 volts, 32 volts, 12 volts is what we know, right? It's transformed. It's transformed. And the core and the wiring, so what you have in you, that core that's in you, the Holy Spirit that is in you, is the main core. And your life is wrapped around all these things. I'm like, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit saying, do this and do this and do this. But understand that we have what you call in a transformer, any current losses. And heat losses, right? So the world is trying to get you to adapt to these losses, to these things that are no good. And try to contain them in you. So what happens if you have a transformer that isn't built to, to uh, get rid of the heat? It smokes, it burns up. <laughs> but when it is conditioned and built, it's like on a solid rock. It dissipates, that's the word, dissipates the heat, and it continues to run and run and run effectively. So we have to understand that there is a procedure that we must follow. We have to have good material in us in order for us to function. And that material is the Word of God, prayer, praise, worship. Our mind process has to be right. Now, does it ever say that we're going to be perfect? No, a transformer isn't perfect. A, a transformer has an efficiency rating. A motor has an efficiency rating. A car has an efficiency rating. You want to buy a car, you want the most that you can get out of your gas, right? The your gas mileage. So you want to buy a car that is that gets <coughs> 35 miles an hour. I mean, 35 miles per gallon. So you buy an efficient car. And it's supposed to produce a certain amount. <coughs> but you can't put the cheap gas in it. It can't floor it all the time, right? You gotta drive like you should drive. You gotta drive correctly. You gotta put the right gas in there. You gotta change the oil. There's things that you have to do. So maintenance in life. In secular life, and maintenance and ministry doesn't change. Garbage in, garbage out, right? Sowing and reaping, see, that doesn't change. So if 
You want to live a productive life, you must walk in the Spirit, and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. It says that you may prove, that what? That you may demonstrate, or you may show forth that you have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. So let me give you four quick points to <coughs> obedience to the will of God. These are uh, simple points. Point number one is that God only possesses all glory and worthiness to be served. Once you realize that, you cater the rest of the world and more to God. Now you must totally live to Him before Him at all times and in all things, in all situations. That's two. And three, you must receive revelated knowledge from him. That's three. In order to be obedient to him. So how do you receive revelation knowledge from him? Through scripture. Right? Through seeking him, through, through his word and prayer. Four is to, in order to walk in obedience to Him, there's certain things that you must do. And that is give full concentration and dedicate yourself <coughs> to learning more. You must have a desire and a delight in all that you do for Him. Not do it begrudgingly, right? But do it because that's what God requires you to do through His will. Okay? So, in other words, put the Word of God into practice in your life. Okay? When you do that, and you demonstrate who you are, you demonstrate the love of God in you and through you to others, then you will be obedient to God. You will be obedient to the will of God. Okay? <clears throat> so in closing, let me say this. As Christians, we ought to be obedient to the will of God in every area of our life, in every way. See, the execution of the will of God describes the outward acts of the believer in Christ and is, to, and is an obedience extending to all matters of daily living for Christ. When you are allowing God, or the will of God, to flourish in your life, in other words, you will be exhibiting or you will become the image of Jesus Christ to this lost and dying world. As a Christian, you are to live your life in agreement <clears throat> with a scripture that I'm going to read in the closing. James, chapter 1. In verse 27. And this pertains to this time of the year since we're in the Christmas season, since Thanksgiving <coughs> just passed this Thursday, which we should have really been uh, demonstrating because we are what in the Advent season, right? The coming of Christ. James 1 and 27 says, what the Father considers to be pure and genuine religion is this. 
to take care of orphans and widows in their sufferings and to keep oneself from being corrupted by the world. Okay, you know, Christmas has been turned around. God knew what man needed, so he sent his only begotten son, right? He didn't ask them what they think they need. If I, if I get a room with a hundred people in there and ask, well, what do you need? Very few, even in a church, are going to say, more of God, more of Christ. Well, I need a, a new hat, a new car, I need this to do that, I need that to do that, I need this, I need that. Very few will say, I need more of God in my life. I need a change in my life. I need God to use me for His praise and glory. I need God to touch my heart and what He wants me to do for Him. I need God to transform me. I have a desire to be transformed. People will tell you what they want. They won't say, well, but they, they won't acknowledge what their real need is. And their real need is to walk closer to God and have a closer relationship with God. That's the real need. So, the question is, how do you judge your obedience to the will of God? And what I'd like you to do this week is meditate on that thought and that question. I mean, this, when I ask you to do something, I, I'm going to do it myself. I'm not a dictator up here. I'm a minister of God. And when God's speaking to you, He's speaking to me at the same time. Okay? So, remember James 1.27, especially this time of the year. What God the Father considers to be pure and genuine religion is this. Take care of the orphans and the widows and their sufferings and keep and to keep oneself from being corrupted by the world. Yeah. Uh, the world system is on the way to hell. Keep that in mind. Look at our country, look at our leaders. Look at the world. Some people are doing things in the name of God. And it's not of God. Let us demonstrate Jesus Christ. So you can go around and say, God, 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 all you want. But there's power in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus says, anything you shall ask the Father in my name, that will I do. What? That my Father will be glorified in all. What you do. Come together in the name of Jesus Christ. Come together with other Christians. Touch and agree in the name of Jesus Christ. Be fruitful for God. So, that concludes our message today titled Obedience to the Will of God from Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. We just praise the Lord for today and for the message. And let me say this, that if you have never accepted Christ as your Savior and Lord, I want to pray with you today to accept Christ as your Savior and Lord. If you have not been walking according to the will of God, if you haven't been obedient to God, you can pray this also. Father, in Jesus' name, I come before you a, a sinner. I heard the message today. I have been a rebel, a renegade, been a, a sinner, and have not given my life to you. I am convicted today through the message to the Holy Spirit. And I ask you to forgive me of my sins to cleanse me of all unrighteousness. To save me. I repent of my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for me. 
I believe he rose again from the dead on the third day and ascended into heaven. So God's sitting at your right hand in the place of power and majesty from where he should come to judge the dead and the living. I'm sorry for my sins. And I thank you for sending Jesus to die for my sins. And I acknowledge that today. And I acknowledge that through my prayer of repentance because I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that I have become a Christian. In Jesus' name I pray and I thank you. Amen. Mm -hmm. You said that prayer? Let me walk you into the kingdom of God. What I want you to do is go to a Bible preaching, teaching church, speak to the pastor, ask him to anoint you with oil, to pray with you and for you, and to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now what I want you to do is uh, Email me at abundant.grace at att.net. That's abundant.grace at att.net. And tell me that you received Jesus Christ. Or you can contact me through our website at www.abundantgracechurch.net. That's www.abundantgracechurch.net. Thank you for being with us today. We are Abundant Grace Church. I'm Bishop Ramon Di Maria. Now I'm the pastor of Abundant Grace Church. And let me say this, that please prepare your hearts to celebrate the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this Christmas. God bless you and go with God.